back to the, incre the really early days, I mean, the, were, you, um, were you funny at school? This is, which is weird, me asking this, because it's the one question when I get in interviews. Oh, do I they can't ask bear you it. that? Oh, and what were do you, you the answer? funny kid at school to deflect the bullies? And I was like, no, I was really quiet, really quiet. Yeah, yeah. I was good at voices, and they used to harness that. That was the one thing. I was a bit with oh. accents and things. Oh, and is that what you uh, what got you through? We did we we did a school play, uh. not like, but the songs from Oliver, and I compared it. But I had to be like a, a, a chimney sweep, and you could <laughs> see all the parents looking. You never get that up a chimney. Look at it, <laughs> <laughs> size of him. Yeah, well that's Industrial the funny bit. I'm doing, sweep. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. Uh, yeah, I mean they say that, don't they? I mean I used to do a joke about that. What was it? it was, uh, you know, they say. Uh, you do a bit of comedy to get you through school and all yeah. that, and I used to just go around beating up all the, the yeah, idiots. You were the bully. And, yeah, that was it. and nicking their material. <laughs> just yeah, tell me something funny. No, I, I didn't. No, I was very shy and, um, uh, and quite idiotic at school, so I but never did any of that really. With with, with it, um, you know, the business been been in the, in your family. Mm. What was what was it? Was it your granddad as well? Was he? No, my granddad used to just get up in the pub and sing now and again. He, he really enjoyed his voice. He had a really good voice. And he looked the image of Frank Sinatra. No. Exactly like him, yeah, when he was younger. Not when he was old, like, when he was big. Yeah. You know. But, uh, yeah, and he was a real strong guy. I like, I like my grand... I love my granddad. He's brilliant. But what... Mains, man. What... Your, your dad went into the business. Why... Where did that come from? Was that just a... I don't know, but my father's got this amazing ability just to do anything. I don't know where he gets it from. It just must be in his genes or something. But I've seen him get a tune out of a chair once. He's get just off. unbelievable. He, pick, he can pick a chair up and just get a tune out of it, not just by smashing it over your head. You know, <laughs> not a rhythmic one. Big but, finish. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and for more, big finish. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he really is, uh, he's, a, he's just a genius. And, uh, and it, it, when, he was, when I was a kid, he was my hero, because he used to, we used to travel around with him and he'd perform. And seeing your dad on the stage, you know, in lights and... It was like, it's unbelievable to watch. When, unbelievable. When were the first sort of glimmerings of, of stand-up as an idea, you know, first coming to Red? When did you first consider it as, a, as an option for something you could do, you know, I think the, the way it did is, I, when I was at Art College, I joined the band. The band were absolutely crap. I mean, they were mad. The, our lead singer was mad. He'd always start a fight when we had a gig, and, you know, he was, like, mental. And I used to play the drums, but and and people used to say, "Who's the idiot on the drums? He's just like an idiot." And I used to have big fuzzy hair, uh, <laughs> and odd clothes in, and huge ears sticking out the side of the fuzzy. And they go, "Who's the mad geezer on the drums?" And I never said a word. You know, just pack my drums yeah. away and go away. And and it was always that. So I always got to uh, uh, got a few kind of, "Who's the idiot on the drums?" Yeah. And then and then after the band sort of split up because they were crap. I sort of thought, well, I can play a couple of instruments and all that. So I, I went out and started doing that at night. It was a natural progression because it was something we'd always done in our house. If I wasn't doing this now, I'd be playing instruments in the yeah. house or doing something like that, I think, because it was just something we did. Can you remember your first sort of proper gig where you said, oh, I'm going to go and...? Uh, I think... Well, I mean, I've done a number of clubs, working men's clubs, yeah. but I think the, the, the moment I sort of really... F f Thought it, I enjoyed it. Was when I did the comedy store. I think one night I was I, I went to do the comedy store because yeah. I'd been writing my own material, doing work in men's clubs, yeah. and it was just dying so badly. Which I can't blame the people because it was crap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was really bad. It was <laughs> observational crap. You ever walk down the road and like trip over? It's really like funny, isn't it? <laughs> you know, in a work in men's club. <laughs> you what? <laughs> you know, it's all that. Buy him off. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> kill him. Uh, and and fair play. I was told once that someone threw a fire extinguisher at you on stage. Is that true? Yeah, in Brighton, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But bigger, not one of them. Yeah, that was really under the alternative, dashboard yeah. Ones. No, no, not the, no, not one of them the ones. You know, on. the ones in the rally cars. No, not no, the <laughs> full on. Bang, just hit me on the head. I, no. Yeah, well, I wouldn't mind. I never said anything. I haven't even said anything yet. So they don't, didn't know what it was like. But oh. That is in the harsh. early days. It was harsh, but it was alternative. You know, <laughs> harsh. I was a subliminal act. Just There's a title for a DVD, out. Harsh But Alternative. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but that's all right. That was that, I, I learnt something that night. <laughs>